Hey, fourth graders, it's Mrs. Long, and today we are working on learning how to read line plots and stem and leaf plots. So these are both ways that we can represent data. And remember, we've learned that data is really, I mean, there's all kinds of data. Uh, basically, any observations that we're collecting about the world around us. So the line plot that you see here is representing trail lengths. So this might be trail lengths in a state park or something like that. But these are all different lengths of trails. And as we are looking at this, I want to point out a couple of different different things that are really important for us to remember about line plots. Line plots look a lot like number lines. Now, in this case, our number line is, has every single dash labeled. So you guys can see with my mouse where I'm showing you guys the different dashes. Each one is labeled with a number. They don't have to do that because on number lines, the each dash is always going to be the same interval or distance apart. In this case, it's all labeled, so that makes it a lot easier for us to read. And we also know about line plots that each of these X's represents a data point. Each X represents a data point. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells me that the shortest trail length is six eighths of a mile. How do I know that? Well, the smallest number that has X's over top of it is six eighths. So that means that that would be the shortest length represented in this. And I know it's a length in this case because that's what it's labeled as. Okay, it's length in miles. That's what this data is. If you were measuring something different, it's going to be different um, based off of what it's labeled as. So we always want to look at the labels because that really helps us to understand. Now, we also can see that the highest length or the longest length of trail is one and seven eighths miles because that's the biggest number on my line plot that has an X over top of it. Now, just to point out, my number line goes down to four eighths and it goes all the way up to two, two holes. But notice the two doesn't have any X's. That means there's no trails that are two miles long. And my four eighths doesn't have any X's. That means there's no trails that are four eighths or even five eighths miles long. Sometimes when we look at a line plot, we will see that there is data over the smallest number and the biggest number. Sometimes we'll see a few dashes before we start seeing the data. Remember, these X's are the data. Well, what could we answer about this? We could see, well, how many trails are 6 eighths miles? So we're going to find 6 eighths on our line plot. And we're going to count how many X's it has on top of it. There's one, two X's. That means there's two trails that are six eighths miles. There's one trail that's seven eighths miles. There's one trail that's exactly one mile. All right. Notice there's no X's over one and one eighth. That means there's no trails that were one and one eighth mile. What was the most common distance of trail? All right, what is the most common distance of trail? This is another question that we can answer about our line plot. Well, when we're looking for the most common data point, we're gonna look for the data point that appears the most. In this case, it's the data point that has the most X's. So how many X's are, this one is the most X's, three. Those are over one and three eighths miles. So that's the most common trail length one and three eighths mile. We could also ask how many trails are between one and two miles long? How many trails are between one and two miles long? Well, we're going to look at the one and we're going to look at the two and we're going to count all the X's that fall between the one and the two. That's going to answer that question. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trails that are between one and two miles long. And then there are one, two, three trails that are less than one mile long. So these are all different questions that we can answer using this line plot. You can see a line plot is a really valuable way to represent data because it lets it be, it's, it's a very clear representation. The data is very clear on it and it allows us to interpret the data and answer questions about the data. So now it's your turn. I'm going to go on to the next slide and I have a question. 
All right, let's read it together. And then you're going to hit pause and you're going to answer the question. So it says the, a park of several trails, a park has, there we go. Reading is important. A park has several trails of different lengths. The lengths of the trails are shown in the line plot. What is the difference in length between the longest trail and the shortest trail? Remember, what is the difference means we are going to subtract. So we're going to subtract the distance between the longest trail. Remember, this is the longest trail and the shortest trail. So I'm going to let you guys pause and you're going to do that subtraction. You're going to do one and seven eighths minus six eighths to see what the difference is between the longest trail and the shortest trail. Go ahead and pause right now and answer the question. All right, so you have had a chance to pause and answer the question. And when you do that subtraction, you're doing the seven eighths minus six eighths. Seven eighths minus six eighths equals one eighth. And then one whole minus nothing equals one whole. So the answer is B, one and one eighth miles. Is that what you got? Awesome. All right, let's look at another one. Here is another line plot. This one is about a veterinarian at an animal shelter and she weighs her puppies every day. One day she records the weight on a line plot. So let's take a look at this. This is our weight in pounds. So this is how much each puppy weighs in pounds. Remember these numbers down here represent different weights and our X's represent the puppies. So again, there's all kinds of questions that we can answer about this. What's the most common weight? Pause it and see if you can figure that out. What's the most common weight? Did you say one and six eighths? You should have because one and six eighths has the most X's on top. There's three puppies that weigh one and six eighths pound. What is the heaviest puppy? Go ahead and pause and answer that question. What is the heaviest puppy? The heaviest puppy is two and two eighths pounds because that's the biggest number that has an X on the top. And what's the lightest puppy? Go ahead and pause and answer again. The lightest puppy is one and one eighths pounds. Good. All right, let's look at some questions about this line plot and see if we can answer them. In this case, we're gonna see if these questions are true or false true or false okay the difference between the two heaviest puppies is one eighth of a pound so the two heaviest puppies on in the pound or in the vet's office wherever they were i can't remember already is two and two eighths and one and seven eighths if i do two and two eighths minus one and seven eighths am i gonna get one eighth I'm not, right? Because if I look on my number line, I can see it's one, two, three eighths different. Remember when we learned how to do subtraction on number lines, we learned we can actually just even count down the number line. So it's one, two, three eighths would be the difference. So that one is false. Now I'm gonna have you guys pause and answer these last two questions on here. The combined weight, when we combine, we put it together. So that means we're adding of the two lightest puppies is two and two eighths. So go ahead and pause right now and answer that. If I look at my two lightest puppies and I add their weights together, do I get two and two eighths? Pause and answer. All right, well, I'm looking at these right here. And if I add one and one eighth plus one and two eighths, one eighth plus two eighths is three eighths, and one plus one is two. So two and three eighths would be the combined weight of the two lightest puppies. That one's false too. It's not two and two eighths, it's two and three eighths. All right, let's look at this last one. The difference, remember difference means you're subtracting because that's the answer to subtraction. The difference between the heaviest puppy, this guy right here, and the lightest puppy, this guy right here, is one and one eighth pounds. Go ahead and do that subtraction for me. Pause and see if you get the answer. Is it true or false? Go ahead and pause. All right, when I do two and two eighths minus one and one eighth, two eighths minus one eighth 
equals one eighth. So, so far we're good. And two minus one equals one. So that one is true. The difference between the heaviest puppy and the lightest puppy is one and one eighth pounds. That means that the heaviest puppy is twice as heavy as the lightest puppy. Do you guys see that? That's crazy. All right. So that's answering some questions with line plots. Now, Let's look at this one. This is a stem and leaf plot. And as you guys probably remember from the video earlier today, I think stem and leaf plots are a little weird. All right. But it is a way to represent data. And we do need to understand how to read and understand data on a stem and leaf plot. So let's take a look at it. It says each unique tens digit is listed below as a stem. So each of these is tens. And then the leaves are the ones digits for the numbers. So this is titled Art Exhibit Visitors. So this is the amount of visitors that visited an art exhibit, probably like over a different set of days. Each of these stems represents a 10. So this would be 30, 40, 50, or sorry, there's no 50, 30, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90. And then each of these leaves represents the one. So I would read this as 39. I would read this as 45, which is what our key shows us. I would read this as 63, 67, 68, 68 again, 69. And this would be 70, 71 again, seven, uh, sorry, 70, 71 again or 71, oh my word, I can't, I keep saying the same thing. 71 again, that's why I'm saying it because there's two 71s. 72, 73, 74, 75, 79. Okay, following along so far. 81, 82, 82. So there's two 82s, 96, and 97. So if I wanted to say what was the least amount of visitors that visited the art exhibit, well, that's the smallest number and it's 39. It's not just nine or just three. Remember the stem and the leaf have to go together. Okay. They have to go together. That's really important. And I would say that's probably the most common mistake I see students make when they're trying to read stem leaf plots. They just read the leaves or they just read the stem. Okay, so 39 has to go together. What was the most amount of visitors that visited the art exhibit? 97. 97 would be the most. If I wanted to know which, um, how many visitors within the 70s range visited, I could count how many each of these represents a day. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight days where there were 70 something visitors. Okay, so those are some different questions we can answer with stem and leaf plots. Again, they're a little bit trickier, they're a little bit more confusing, but the more you practice with them, the better at them you're going to get. So let's take a look at another one. This is Isabel's Bakery. So Isabel sells muffins at her bakery. She keeps track of how many muffins she sells each day. We've made the stem and leaf plot with the data. Okay, so here's all the data. These are, she just wrote it down on a sheet of paper and then she wanted to put it into a stem and leaf plot. So that's what she did over here. Again, the stem is tens, the leaves are ones. So if you see three line seven, that equals 37. How many days does Isabel sell more than 50 muffins? How many days does Isabel sell more than 50 muffins? Okay, so think really carefully about what that question is asking. Remember, anything that is after the five or bigger would be more than 50 muffins. So go ahead and pause and count how many days you see. Okay, so if we look at it, here's the 50, right? Because that's what that five stands for. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days where Isabel sells more than 50 muffins. The least amount of muffins she ever sold was 37. The most she ever sold was 63. Okay, but there were, I already forgot, seven days <laughs> where she sold more than 50 muffins. All right, if you need to rewatch this video, go back and rewatch it as many times as you need to, to practice what reading stem and leaf plots and line plots, and then go ahead and complete the worksheets that are linked down below to practice reading stem and leaf plots and line plots. I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.